Okay, here we are in the screen setup or the touch plate setup page for the initial setup of a touch plate in the TriQuetcha toolbox. So the first thing you want to do is get your touch plate and if you look at this photograph here you can see how it's laid out, how it's oriented. So I'm going to do the same thing with mine. I'm going to hold it up like this. Now I know this doesn't look like your touch plate. This is actually the first one I ever made and I'm still using it. Couldn't, couldn't bring myself to throw it away. Anyway, uh, orient it just like the one in the photograph is here. And then if you look, you'll see in the picture where it has the red arrow with the x-axis. That's what we're going to measure first. And to measure this, I'm going to really go all out here. And I'm going to use a tape measure, which you would never do if you really was trying to get an accurate measurement. But we don't have to worry about accuracy yet. Okay, that's one of the beauties of the software is it's going to take care of that for us. So I'm just going to put a tape measure up there. I'm going to measure it, and it's pretty close to two inches. And then I'm going to put in two inches right here, two, and say OK. And if you watch the picture over here, you'll see it change when I hit OK. Okay, my feed rate is set to two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept that. My default location to save our G code files to uh, is gonna be C, the C drive in a folder called G code. Say okay. Now here we get to look at all the numbers one more time to make sure we like them, and I'm, that looks good enough for me. So we'll confirm the settings and click get started and here we are at the main menu first thing we need to do is create a zeroing code and we're going to do that by going to standard G code up here we're going to do a left corner and we're going to use a quarter inch bit so I'm going to change that to 0.25 the, we've got to give it a file name so I'm going to call it uh, 0.25 test dot text so it's going to be saved as uh, 0 0.2 0 0.25 test text okay and there's our measurements again that we used a while ago here's a nm02 command some computers need this some of them don't mine does not uh, if you have a the new x controller you very well may especially if you're using universal g code sender I like the folder save location, so I'm going to generate a three axis code up here. So I'm just going to click that. And I got a message that the G code file 0.25 test text was created and can be found in the C G code folder. We we'll say OK. Now I'm just going to minimize the screen. And I've got Pixender loaded up here, which is my favorite program to use. But I'm going to click load and I'm going to go to my C drive G code folder which just happens to be right there and I'm looking for a 0 0.25 test text which is right there okay. and I'm going to open it so now the file is loaded and ready to run so let me reposition the camera and we'll see what we get out of this okay I've already got the uh, touch plate in position and connected. I've got my magnet on here. I've got my bit lowered. It's uh, uh, it's a little more than a tenth of an inch away from touching the surface. It's plugged in. Everything is all set up. So I'm going to reach right here and just kind of hold on to this so it doesn't accidentally move with the wires. And uh, you can see it going. So I'm going to go ahead and send that code now. So let's zero in the x-axis. Now it's zero on the y-axis. You can see it's moving fairly slow. But that's okay. Now it's going to come over and measure the uh, z-axis. It's going to do a double touch on the z-axis uh, to increase the accuracy rather than go real fast. 
So there's the first one. And there's the second one. So now it's moved up, moved about an inch back off the touch plate to get out of the way. I'm going to remove the touch plate and my magnet. And now in Pixender I'm going to click on go to zero for the x-axis. Go to zero for the y-axis. And go to zero for the z-axis. Okay, now let me zoom the camera in so you can see where we're at. Uh, and we're not going to be correct yet, but that's pretty much we knew that anyway. Measuring with a tape measure, uh, wasn't expecting to get very close at all. Okay, this is where the bit landed when we did our zeroing sequence just a moment ago. And as you can see, uh, the bit is just a little bit to the right of really lining up perfectly on that edge. So I'm going to set my jog units in Pixender down to, uh, well let's start at point zero 0.01 and see if that uh, gets you where we want to go enough. So I'm looking at the same thing you are, I'm looking in the camera lens to try to get it where we want it. And that looks like it's right, well maybe one more, let's see. There we go. Okay so, we've moved that one and uh, I'm not going to move the camera around to show it to you but uh, take my word for it we moved the bit to uh, 0 0.03 actually it's a negative 0 0.03 inches Okay, so now we're going to move the bit in the y direction which you're not going to be able to see that and I'm not going to try to mess around with the camera too much so I'm just going to lean up over here and I'm going to look at it and see how close I can get it they got a pretty good light behind it so I should be able to be right about on it I think I'm there, and that, that moved a positive 0 0.04, so I'm going to write that down for the y-axis. Okay, now we need to get the z-axis, so I'm going to raise it up a little bit, which it was already up some anyway, and I'm going to jog over, well, we'll just jog over uh, two inches, how's that? There we go. So, I'm going to start jogging down. I'm going, to, I'm going to jog down until I trap this paper, but I'm still able to pull it out without tearing it, which is just barely going to happen. So, I'm going to start going down at point zero 0.01 until it's trapped for sure. Okay, that's pretty well trapped. So, I'm going to change my jog, actually I'm going to raise it up 0 0.01 and now it's let go I'm going to change my jog units to one one thousandth of an inch now I'm going to start jogging down again until it traps there we go now then I've trapped it okay as you can see it's trapped but it's not quite tearing Eh, I think it's maybe a little bit loose. So I'm going to come down one more thousandth of an inch. There we go. Now I'm getting it out just barely. I got it out, but I cannot get it back in. So that's pretty much right on zero for the z-axis. Okay, And if you look at the shadow there, you can see that there's no uh, gap underneath it. So I'm going to write down our the units that we jogged in the z-axis and believe it or not it ended up at 0 0.02 which is really unusual. I usually get into some thousandths numbers but not this time. And it's in the positive direction so 0 0.02. Okay we're back in the truck puncher toolbox on the fine tuning page and here's the numbers that I wrote down I don't know if you can read them on there or not probably not but they're there so I'm going to enter those into the spreadsheet in the right columns so for the x-axis we moved negative 0 0.03 so I'm going to go up here in the negative column and I'm going to enter in 0 0.03 
in the Y column we knew we moved a positive 0.4 or 0 0.4. So under the positive column well, for the y axis 0 0.04 and for the z axis we were also in the positive and it was 0 0.02. So those are the corrections we made to get the bid actually positioned at x, y, z and 0. So now I'm just going to click this fine tuning button right here and it's going to apply the tuning, it's going to apply this tuning to these numbers so if you watch over here you'll see these numbers adjust so apply tuning there we go and it says data save so it saved our information okay and okay that's done so the next thing for us to do is go back to our um, G code generator page or standard G code generate code for the left corner and uh, I'm gonna create a file and we're going to call it zeroed with an ED just to be different. So now we're going to be creating a file called zeroed. We got ES ED. There we go. Zeroed G code. Okay. So we just go over and click the uh, generate three axis code. The code was generated and it can be found in the same G code folder. Say OK to that. We minimize this. Go to our load screen and pick sender. Z road. Right here it is. Okay, click that one and open it. Now it's ready to run. Okay, we've got the file loaded up. We made the corrections, created a new file, and I've got it loaded up. It's the Z road uh, G code file. I've got the bit, the bit and position. I've got everything all hooked up. So here we go. We're going to zero it again and see if those corrections. Uh, got us to a more accurate zero. In here, so you can get a better look at that. Maybe if I turn the bit a little bit. I think you can see that well enough. That's uh, that's pretty much right on the money there. And that was uh, using a tape measure to measure the touch plate, running one zero sequence, making the corrections, using the machine to do the measuring. The correct winter toolbox calculated those corrections, generated a new code, and we ran it the second time, and the second time we ran it, you see what we got. And so from now on, a quarter inch bit, any quarter inch bit, it could be a ball nose, it could be an end mill, uh, a V bit, it won't make any difference. It'll always turn out just exactly like that every single time. There is a bomb, a